Hey everybody, Texas Dad here. I'm here with my son, Matt. Uh, he is my son and yep. we are genetically related. We are. You gotta read the comments, <sighs> y'all. That's all, you gotta, you gotta read the love comments. Them. Today, uh, I had a good friend uh, send me a video and me and Matt were just watching it. So we thought we would share it. It's very timely, it's very pertinent. And this video comes from Austria uh, via Survival Lily. And she's just uh, pointing some things out that's going on mm -hmm. um, in Europe. And they are suffering from all the same issues, problems, and challenges that we're having. And all those issues have just been exacerbated Big time. by uh, Nord Stream 1 and 2 uh, magically exploding. Um, so mm -hmm. <laughs> we wanted to review this video with you. And she has a lot of good suggestions on here, so we thought we would give it a whirl. Yeah, let's get into it. Hey guys, today I want to give you some prepping news from Austria and Europe. Um, unfortunately, we are in a pretty depressing situation when it comes to the economy. Um, so first of all, uh, we have about 10% inflation now, and now... I have the feeling that people have spent most of their savings and they are living from month to month, from hand to mouth and um, the prices of food and other commodities have increased quite tremendously. So here you can see an article in the newspaper uh, that food has become so much more expensive. So for example here they have a comparison. In January 2021, they were charging 13 euros for four chicken breasts. Now they are charging 18 euros. So that's five euros more for the same product, for the same food. And that's quite a lot. So now the problem is that um, people are getting so desperate that they are starting to steal much more than before. So here you can see an article about the German supermarkets Lidl and Edeka and they have observed that um, shoplifting has increased quite tremendously so now they are putting alarm devices on butter and meat and that's what you usually only see on very expensive electronic products so now the next so we're experiencing a lot of parallels to this, I believe, supposedly, according to the Consumer Price Index, if you can believe the math, mm -hmm. our current inflation that they said didn't exist, and then they passed the Inflation Protection Act um, while they were saying we didn't have inflation and that it was transitory, but now it's 8.9%. It's actually much higher than that. So, um, so what was the Inflation Protection Plan supposed to do? Well, the Inflation Protection Act was supposed to stop the inflation that wasn't happening. So, like, so they passed yeah. it, and, and then it still hasn't worked. <laughs> instantly, inflation started. <laughs> so, of course, this is what we've talked. We talk about this all the time. Whenever they do something like this, or say that they're going to, whatever, enact some type of law or whatever, or some type of idea that they've came up with, it's the absolute opposite of their objective um, with their plan or act. That's true. <laughs> so again, see, we're all learning. And then secondarily, she's talking about uh, shoplifting increasing now in your flashpoint cities and in your, you know, defund the whatnots and everything. Mm -hmm. um, there's been enormous spikes in theft. Mm. And here in Germany, they're stealing food from supermarkets. So now you have the little dongle widget things that go beep, 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 beep on the butter. So they got butters, they got butter that beeps in Germany. So that's just something to think about. Next thing which is happening in Austria and also in Germany is that people are going into the forest and collect some firewood. Um, Wild Woman Bushcraft, Vanessa Blank, in Germany has observed a young family going into the forest and collecting branches. And um, the thing is that in most forests, which is private property here in Austria and Germany, this is not allowed. Even if it's a forest which is owned by the government, you still have to get permission. So you cannot just go into the forest and pick up some branches because it's all private property. 
and if you do not have the permission then it's stealing so I had a friend uh, who was visiting me the other day and he also told me he saw people going into the forest and getting those branches out for firewood yeah so the legal situation in Austria is that most of the forest is private property and the forest which is owned by the government is treated just like private property so we don't have this concept of public forests like um, the US has now because everything is treated like private property they have made a special law in Austria that you can walk in every private forest you can take a walk with your dog you can walk alone you can also collect berries and you can collect two kilograms of mushrooms each day but you're not allowed to collect firewood without the permission and that's what's happening now and that's because the firewood price in Europe has surged and that's because people now are burning firewood again to heat their houses so either they already have a central heating with wood stoves or they have a small wood stove in their living room and yeah that's actually what I did so I got a wood stove back in January and now I'm really glad I did because most of the and that's what we did when was it? it was that was this past spring yes and we got two fireplaces one for our tiny house and one for this big house two wood stoves two wood stoves yeah and also we've seen I've seen an uptick of a lot of people have been getting wood stoves but then the other thing that comes with the wood stove is that you do have to process firewood or at least buy firewood so there's this new demand for firewood so of course that means that that price is going to skyrocket the price per cord in our area has doubled from about 150 to 300 yep and last the two winters ago, when we had that 100 year um, snowstorm, it was up to about a $400 a cord um, in the Dallas area. People were stopping by our house perpetually. I, I had a list of people and they're like, as soon as you get a little bit of wood, just call me. I will pay whatever it is. I need the wood because the electric was through the moon, um, expensive and you know, but I barely had enough wood just to keep our house warm. So I was able to help out a couple of them and just give them some logs or maybe was a, I was able to spare one lady a trunk full of firewood. I remember that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely um, if you haven't already figured out your heating situation for this winter, and I don't care where you live in the world, I would uh, figure it out <laughs> what you're going to do before it's too late. That's a good idea. Um, <laughs> because... Don't wait a minute. Yeah. So you mean like plan ahead? Like don't wait yeah. to like be freezing and then say, what am I going to do? Yeah. And then you're gonna like, I should have done something. Y'all, y'all yeah. were chopping firewood today. Right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, not personally me, but my brothers were working on firewood. I made a goal this week. I was talking to one of my uh, neighbor friends and I was like, dude, let's just go ahead. And I need your help and you need my help because they heat with firewood too. They have several fireplaces and I'm like, I'm a slightly behind the ball. I have all the wood ready, but I just need to get it split up and stacked up and ready. So he's like, okay, I'll be over there and help you this week. So um, planning ahead, our fireplaces, if we would have waited till now to buy them, I think they've almost doubled or they've went up a thousand dollars already, which is nuts. And who knows when they'll, you know, who knows how long the shipping and everything will be and when they'll be in stock and everything like that. So the Lord did bless us with two wood stoves, which was a very big blessing. Wood stoves are sold out. And also, if you buy firewood now, there's not a lot left and it will cost like twice the amount of money than compared to three years ago. So it's gotten really expensive. And that's why people start picking up branches in the forest. Now the problem is, <clears throat> it's not good for the stove, wood stove or oven to burn firewood which is not seasoned. So usually you should let it dry for two years and then you can burn it in the stove. If you don't do that, you will have a lot of um, 
particles settling inside of the chimney and that can burn then you can get a chimney burn which is not good and which can burn down your house if the chimney is not safe so that's the risk that comes with it so as you can see economic wise we are pretty much going into a recession and you can hear the word recession everywhere now and most market analysts are agreeing now that we are approaching or that we are already in a recession okay next i want to give you an update so for people that don't know what is a recession well a recession according to the old definition of recession was two quarters of shrinking gdp to avoid the fact of the united states being in a recession they changed the definition uh, they've been mm. doing that a lot lately. It's called postmodernism. Yeah, a lot of things in a post-truth world. So in a in a po in a post-truth world and in postmodernism, um, you can there don't have to be, there doesn't have to be any truth or facts. You can change the definition in real time and through the um, sparkling, wonderful technology, you can just make things memory hold disappear. And uh, it's, it's, very, it's very convenient for the thought police and for the ing sockers and for the Orwellian dystopian technocratic oligarchy. Um, so <sighs> that's how they do things. So what is a recession? I haven't checked the current definition of recession, but it used to be two quarters of shrinking GDP okay. is what it used to be. Date on the... Austrian distillery which was damaged on 3rd of June so we have um, one distillery plant which is in Schwechat which is owned by the OMV and unfortunately there was an accident in June uh, it was a big accident and the main distillery plant the outer heart got damaged and since then they are repairing it and since then we are running on um, the oil reserves of the Austrian government. And I don't know if this is also contributing to the high price of diesel and gas, but yeah, it's still not repaired. And now after Nord Stream 1 and 2 got sabotaged, supposedly, um, there was an article in a couple of newspapers and they were saying that this accident at the distillery plant maybe wasn't an accident. So here you can see the article which is stating that the Austrian Secret Service is now um, yeah, investigating this case. And now they are even stating that this could have been done by a foreign secret service. So I don't know if we will ever find out if this was an accident or sabotage, but one thing is for sure. Look at this. The repairing costs are already at 240 million euros. So that's a lot of money. So it must have been a huge damage. Uh, that's, that's really big. So they have a second distillery plant, but it's only like delivering 20 to 25% of what we need in Austria and we are on reserve right now the question is if it is enough until the main distillery can uh, process crude oils again that's a big question also what happened two days ago a couple of uh, gas stations were running out of gas uh, but now they are getting gas again so it seems to be as if we have a shortage in gas too and yeah I really hope that the repair work is done soon because otherwise it's not looking good for us. So as you can see it's pretty easy to damage the critical infrastructure of a country. Unfortunately we are really vulnerable and on top of that internationally you know what's going on with Nord Stream 1 and 2. I don't even want to comment on that but it probably means that we won't have enough of natural gas and I think that means that a lot of um, companies, they will close their businesses in winter time because they cannot afford natural gas anymore. And then it really is the question, do we have enough of natural gas to heat all of the homes? 
If not, then some households will face a cold winter. The question is, what can we as civilians do to prep ourselves? And I believe it's really important that everybody of us is getting prepared. You want to have some food at home, you want to have water at home, you want to have some means of cooking food, like a camping stove or something. Maybe get some extra cartridges of butane gas for your camping stove. If you don't have that, you can always uh, make a fire in your garden. Um, so you have to have a means of cooking and also you want to have a means of heating your house or flat. Um, so here in Europe, winters can get really cold. Now, I live in the lowlands of Austria where it's not that cold anymore. So the coldest temperatures that we are experiencing here is like minus 15 degrees Celsius for about two weeks and that's about it. And the rest of the winter it has like minus five. So it's not that cold anymore, but in the mountains, like this direction, in the Austrian Alps, it's getting still very cold. Minus 20, minus 25 is no, it's not seldom. So it really depends on where you live and um, you need some kind of means to heat your house. I think wood stoves are great. Now, what I would not use to heat my house is space heaters because they are highly inefficient. Um, they need a ton of electricity. And if everybody in Austria or Germany or any other country would use them at once, a couple of them per household would lead definitely to a blackout because they need so much electricity. Yeah, guys, so this is the situation in Europe right now. And the problem with the inflation is that right now it's 10%, but experts say it will climb up to 12%. The big problem is that the salaries, they are not rising 10 or 12%. They are staying the same pretty much. So if the income is staying the same, but the inflation rises, then um, you will have more people that are poor. You will have more crime. You will have um, the middle class vanishing. And that is the objective of the technocratic oligarchy. Sadly. They want to attack and shrink the middle class. Mm -hmm. they, want, they want two classes. They want them and they want us. And they know that by destroying the middle class and demonizing capitalism through public-private partnerships and this, this fake mockery of what may or may not have used to been capitalism uh, involving all this government regulation, government overreach, and all these uh, crony capitalists and all their backroom deals and all their lobbying to make it incredibly difficult for the smaller guy to compete with them um, all under the guise of safety, and fairness and all this nonsense and now we have a technocratic oligarchy and we have uh scientism and we have uh tyranny by fiat mm. and uh de facto tyranny by uh not even legislation you know we have these different organizations now that are going to just at their behest control the entire reaction of the world. So this has been the end game and we're seeing here in Austria, it is cookie cutter identical mm -hmm. to what's going on here in America. Sadly. So we're all in the same boat together. Yep. It's not like, well, if you go over here, nope. it's better. It's it, no better. It's not. They we might be one step behind, but we are trying our hardest to catch up. <laughs> Sadly. And that's the way it's been. <laughs> And it's largely in part to most of the people are very comfortable with the bread and circuses. They're in, they're very uh, comfortable with their sports ball games mm -hmm. and their um, music concerts. And as long as they can be entertained, yeah. as long as somebody will play the fiddle, you know, Rome can burn down and they can get as long as they can eat their GMO bread with the stop at McDonald's you with know. cricket supplements you know the, the cricket supplementary ingredients into your GMO wonder 
bread. The whiter the bread, you, the sooner you're dead. You know, <laughs> everybody's happy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's where we're at. That's why we put out this information. Yeah. And uh, some people will heed the warning and yep. listen to it and course correct or consider it. It's like, hell, oh, I never really thought about yeah. that. And like, oh, wow, Austria is having the same problems we are. And as Austria puts a um, pressure on the supply chain, whether it's natural gas or whether it's fuel, um, that'll always, that'll impact everybody, every yeah. time a country. So, you know, this Nord Stream 1 and 2, as it's gonna put major pressure on supply and demand, that will affect uh, distribution around the world. So, you know, they're already seeing these effects we're entering into the winter months, so this is just a barometer to, to kind of show you yep. what's coming here. You can either get ready for it, or you can ignore it, or you can say, y'all are just fear mongers, and all you want to yep. do is create fear, but we, nope. we, don't, we don't live in fear. Nope. We live in faith. Uh, yeah. We do have a brain. We, uh, we do. We do analyze facts, and we look at them, and we say, how can we avoid this potential problem yeah. or issue? Mm-hmm. And then we act accordingly really? and you can't plan for everything. Um, and you know, we ask the Lord uh, for his grace and his help. And he is a, uh, he is a gracious and a merciful God and he blesses us. And we are so thankful Very for true. Uh, yep. wisdom and insight that he gives us. And there's nothing new under the sun. And, um, we just want to share this with y'all. Yeah. And if you like it, like, share, subscribe, sign up, and sign up for our Rumble. Um, also, sign up to our backup channel. Yes, please. And uh, go over on to our website. We have an email list. This way, we can stay in contact with you in case we evaporate or disappear. Um, we'll still be able to get in touch with you. So thanks, y'all, for watching. But yeah, just share this video with family, friends. If you want to watch this video ad-free and support our family and what we do around here on the farm, uh, you can go check out Becoming a Native. You get all these videos ad-free and you get our family's recipes. And on top of that, uh, exclusive discounts and all of the honey, the Texas uh, native honey, locally grown in Texas or harvested in Texas, is now available in one gallon five pound, all of the different sizes, and we ship internationally too. But anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. We will catch y'all in the next video. Bye-bye. See y'all.